Uh, what was the inspiration behind it? And well, you how know, did you guys come to be involved in, in creating it? We, um, we're from Minneapolis, um, which is a really uh, different climate and uh, topography. Uh, and we were interested in such a quantity of open space and trying to to use it in a kind of total way so that if you looked one way that that the piece would actually go past the, the, the limits of your sight. Um, we were kind of interested in the idea um, there's an artist named Alan Capro who uh, has has written a lot and done a lot of work about merging art and life and um, there was he did a piece called Runner that was a one mile long piece of black tar paper and he, he did it in a day and a half and then he took it down in a day and a half and it was like this very significant action and then it was just reversed and we were interested in that idea um, because we were gonna we knew we were gonna do something that was temporary here and in the essay that accompanies that piece he he talked about um, not really knowing an artwork unless you unless you actually did it you know and so we were interested in, uh, we, we don't, we know that there have been a lot of works that have done similar, similar things, you know, um, land art works that are, you know, massive in scale, but we kind of wanted to do it more for, for the experience of doing it ourselves, uh -huh. I guess. Um, so yeah, I, it's, it's, it's about two miles long. Is it really? Is quite a, quite a thing. And, um, you know, so it goes all the way over the mountain up there. Yeah, I mean, you can see the third peak is probably a mile away even from the first one. Um, so it's quite a ways. Wow. And um, yeah, uh, Sammy had a great rattlesnake encounter back there. Really? Uh, yes. What Sammy, happened? <laughs> Sammy, well, he just Did was he just... stepping over a rock and, you know, he heard the rattlesnake where, where? stung. Uh, on the top of that that, oh, okay, that yeah. peak in the third. I won't be going there until a little bit goes down. Yeah, like, <laughs> I thought maybe it was at the AZ West or something. Oh, no, no. Yeah. I was feeling a little bit weird walking there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, sure. Flip-flops. I actually, my friends talked me into going with flip-flops. I had some ants. But, oh, my God. I, had, I did have an ant bite my toe. That's why I'm walking Oh, there. wow, yeah. It's oh. just a little prickle, but it's like scratched it. So the actual art act of creating it is as important as the final product well I mean this was what that? he proposed and, uh -huh. and I, I guess I'm not sure I'm not sure how I feel about that but I I think it's something that we're interested in exploring you know? uh -huh. um, and so it was a really significant effort uh -huh. um, and it it's uh, I think it's uh, it's it's really powerful I, I think when you go and stand and on that first peak um, and you That's look the all the way there. down. Yeah, there's sort of a dark gray ridge, uh -huh. and from there you can, you know, you can look down, and it goes, you know, it, it's, it goes as far as you can see. And what's on the back side of the peak up there? Well, there's, um, it's just sort of a valley, and um, uh -huh. it's, it's a, um, yeah, it's just kind of a valley. It's really pretty. Um, there's also another part to this. This is kind of what we brought to it, but this is actually a collaborative piece with a, an architect from Los Angeles named Laurel Broughton, and she has a studio called Welcome Projects. Huh. And she, uh, you can see one from here, maybe two, but she placed these um, structural triangles of, yeah. of different kind of scale all along the line and out in front of the line. And so there's this really great experience if, if you actually do walk the line where you encounter these, these um, white structures that are... Do they extend all the way across the lake? Because I saw a couple almost, when I drove to the yeah, base of it. Yep, almost. Uh -huh. um, and then when you get to the top of that first peak, there's an, actually a tent. And you can sit down and get out of the sun for a second and, huh. and see the line going both ways. Uh -huh. From a kind of a unique perspective, I think. Going from like... One of, I mean, when we talked about doing this with Laurel, um, you know, go, the idea was to go from one of the biggest, most open spaces you could find to like the smallest, one of the smallest spaces you could be in, which and, would be that tent. Uh huh. So yeah, it's. Somebody I, told me that there's a plan to take it to the city, to a city environment after yeah. this. Is that right? Well, you know, um, Rolu is going to be in residence next year at um, the Walker Art Center in Minneapolis. Uh huh. And we have talked, we're not sure what we're going to do, but we have talked about um, playing with this, this span again. Uh -huh. Because we've seen it in such a defined way now, even though it's so large, and we think it would be interesting to 
just see again what it's like to to install it in a in a really different way, uh -huh. a really different situation. Um, but that's that's one of the things that we've talked about. You know, one of the you know when I, when we were first doing this, a lot of, I would describe kind of what we were doing, and a lot of people would say, "Oh, like Cristo," you know. And, and I, I I always was like, "Well, yeah, kind of, but not really, too." You know, I mean, it's more about the experience of of actually doing it than it is about. I mean, it's partly about what you see. But, uh huh. Um, for us, it's a little bit different than that. But then, um, you know, I'd seen a series of documentaries that uh, I think the Males Brothers made about Christo's yeah. projects. And, and what I liked about them is that you saw so much um, about the community and, the, and how, how the community reacted and how they got involved and what they did. And um, So was there a community of people who were involved in creating this? Well, or there was a, 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 the community three, of Joshua is Tree. You I mean, and these two people here? Yep. And, all and four? Four of these There's people, three. or just the two um, on the left? Mike in the light blue, and then Sammy in the white t-shirt there. Uh-huh. Um, and what's your name? Mike Brady and uh -huh. Sammy Warren. Uh-huh. And my name's Matt Olson, and, and we're, we're called Rolu. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, there was, and Laurel, Laurel from Welcome Projects helped us, and um, she Where has in a, L.A. is a... You know, it's, um, I'm not sure what neighborhood it's in. Uh -huh. But I think Laurel will be out here later, too, and she, there's a, a designer, um... With the, with the name Rowena Sarton, and she made Laurel a dress that also relates to the piece. And so later on, huh. Laurel will be out here. And that's as much about, I think, photographing it at that point uh -huh. um, and how we, we're going to kind of do a few experiments right at the end uh -huh. with the space. But when I was talking about community, I meant more just that people around these, these neighborhoods see this. And it's almost been more interesting to talk to them because I think that the people who are here for High Desert expect to see things like this, but the community really doesn't, and so they've right. been really surprised, and um, a federal agent uh, came out with a German Shepherd the other night and his badge out, and apparently this points right at the military base, uh -huh. and a couple of planes, like like that one, uh, reported this line, and they didn't know what it was, and they were <laughs> concerned that it was some sort of a guide wow. um, or something, and so it's been really interesting to talk to people how far is it from the mill? Does it go into the mill? It doesn't touch the oh, base no, property doesn't. at all. Oh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't. But I guess it points at it. And so, you know, I, I uh -huh. never even thought of something like that. Yeah. It was, he was a really nice guy. Um, uh -huh. And once he kind of understood what was happening, it was it was actually fun uh -huh. to talk to him. But I bet we've had two or 300 people that just live in this area that have come out to just see what's going on. Pe people have been worried it could be a pipeline or... Um, windmills are going in you know and yeah. so just a lot of interesting interaction in that way and i think that was kind of a surprise for us really how fun. long did it take to uh create but to a day put and it a up uh-huh yeah day and a half of brutal <laughs> yeah <laughs> work uh -huh. as you can see it's pretty hot here so. and then it's probably going to take that long or more to take it down as well i'm afraid so <laughs> yeah and then you know we drove here uh, and so from Minneapolis yeah and we've kind of come to see that as a part of like this piece is called here there there here uh -huh. and it, you know one one thing that we were interested in is that you could walk this line and when you got to the end of it it was actually sort of the middle you know and there was another there was another aspect of walking back you know and uh -huh. we were kind of excited by thinking about how we're always kind of going towards something and away from something at the same time and um, we kind of have folded the experience of driving 30 hours through the Rocky Mountains uh -huh. into how we see the uh, the piece. Oh, they're uh -huh. gonna start the dance here. All right, thanks so much. Yeah, yeah. Okay.